Hi, it's Aurelius. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, you're going to learn how to set up your own online store using a platform called Lemon Squeezy. By the end of this tutorial, you have your very own storefront to sell your eBooks, guides, PDFs, software, and other digital goods. Easy peasy, Lemon Squeezy. Let's go ahead and start building your Lemon Squeezy store. All right, so before we begin, what exactly is Lemon Squeezy? Well, Lemon Squeezy is an all-in-one platform for running your online business. It's not exactly brand new as it was launched sometime in July 2021. It's recently gained some traction as more digital creators and SaaS businesses started using it for some notable reasons that I'll cover in this video. Although the landing page aims at software companies, as you can see, but so far the types of businesses and individuals that are hopping onto Lemon Squeezy are digital creators. Bear in mind that Lemon Squeezy heavily focuses on digital goods and digital products. So if you're selling services or physical products, Lemon Squeezy may not be the solution. First of all, why would you use Lemon Squeezy over a well-known platform such as Gumroad? And there's another one called Payhip. Well, let's take a look at pricing because with pricing, their fee is simply 5% plus 50 cents per transaction and you get access to all its tools. On the contrary, Gumroad charges a huge 10% flat fee and this was introduced not too long ago at the time of recording and that does include the transaction fees. So take that into account. So it's not 10% plus additional fees. That's already included. So 10% flat is all they charge, which is quite a significant amount, especially if you're selling a large volume. Another platform is called Payhip. They charge 5% as well, but there is a transaction fee depending on whether you're using PayPal or Stripe. And usually their fee is about 3% plus an additional fee of something like 30 cents per transaction. In other words, with Payhip, it'll be about 8% in fees. In relation to payments and pricing, another reason why you would use Lemon Squeezy over the others that I mentioned is because with Lemon squeezy it acts as a merchant of record but what exactly is a merchant of record well described here it says the merchant of record is responsible for handling all payments and takes responsibility for everything relating to the purchase including collecting sales tax processing refunds and chargebacks and ensuring PCI compliance. So they take all the liability mentioned above so that sellers don't have to worry about any of that. What this all means in layman's terms is that Lemon Squeezy will act on your behalf, collecting all the payments from your customers, including taxes and sorting out all the fees with all the processes. And what they'll do is pay you based on their schedule, which is on the 1st and 15th of the month. So essentially Lemon Squeezy are the resellers of your product. And this all means that you'll have less transactions to worry about, uh, less customers to worry about. They'll handle all that in terms of the payment structure and the chargebacks and things like that and refunds. And there'll be less kind of invoicing for you to do. To be fair, Gumroad does handle payments in this similar fashion too. Lemon Squeezy supports almost all countries and depending on the types of payments that you'll be receiving, you've got PayPal payouts, which are supported in 200 plus countries. Whereas with bank payouts, they support these list of countries and I'll list and link this specific page in the description box below for you to take a look at before you actually sign up. To sign up to Lemon Squeezy, use a link in the description box below. That'll take you to this home page and landing page where you can go ahead and click on get started for free. Sign up using your Google account, Twitter, or sign up using your email. Next, go ahead and confirm your email. Once your email is verified, you'll be taken here where it says welcome aboard partner, now create your store. Enter a store name. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm simply going to call it my awesome store. And this is the subdomain. It'll be myawesomestore.lemonsqueezy.com. And that's what I'll be using to share on social media or to my audience. And that's what the URL will be. However, you can use all the kind of .com later on or use a custom domain and I'll show you in this tutorial later on. But for now, that's all you need to do. Make sure you select the country where you're located to. This is important. Let's go ahead and create my store. It says the store name is taken, so I'll just put a number one there. Let's go ahead and create my store. But of course, make sure you find one that's rather unique as opposed to putting a number. Then you'll land on this page where you'll be taken to the setup process. And this is actually a good guide to follow. And these are the steps that you should take or they're not necessarily everything, but 
this is what you can do to complete the setup process. We've already created our store. So the next step is to fine tune the settings. We'll click on store settings. This is where you'll be taken to your settings on the general where you can rename your store name. Select the store avatar. This will be kind of like a profile pic on your store. You can also edit your store URL. We've selected the country, which is stores registered in this country. But if you're charging in US dollars, feel free to go ahead and find that in the list. Below that, you'll see contact email. This is where your customers can contact you for support in regard to their purchase. Let's say they don't have access anymore or they lost access. They can go ahead and email this specific email to gain access to get in contact with you. And then you'll see Apple Pay and Google Pay, whether you wanna enable these payment methods. I always recommend to leave these enabled so that way your customers are given more options to pay for your products. I'm also going to go ahead and select an avatar. I've gone ahead and uploaded my avatar. And what I'll do now is click on save changes. While we're in the settings section, let's run through some of these other tabs. We've got domain, which I mentioned where you can connect a custom domain. So let's say you rather not use a uh, subdomain such as, you know, my awesome store one dot lemonsqueezy.com or something like that. If you want to brand it a bit more, you should register for a domain name at places such as namecheap.com, GoDaddy. And then once you've registered it, you simply click on plus, enter the domain that you registered, and then follow these DNS setup instructions so that you can connect it all together. These are a few apps that you can integrate with Lemon Squeezy, although they do connect with Zapier, which then connects to thousands of other apps. More advanced, but if you do want that functionality, there is that right here. We've also got webhooks and email, which is related to the email marketing tool, which is right here. We'll talk more about email marketing later on, but this is where you can change the settings, including the sender's uh, company name, organization name, or and address. In the affiliate section, what you can do is actually set up your own affiliate program. So those who want to promote your product for a commission, they can do so. However, you do need to enable affiliates and then there's an approval process. We'll talk more about the approval process in this video too, which is quite important. So next is recovery. This is a great little feature. So if someone, let's say, adds something to cart and they didn't check out, this is where this comes handy. They will then be alerted that, you know, you left something in the cart. You might have seen this or have experienced this while shopping or going on an e-commerce store. But that's that. Under plans, you'll see a summary of what the fees are, including what email marketing costs. So there is costs involved with the email marketing aspect of lemon squeezy. Obviously, the more subscribers you have, the more it will cost. But of course, if you have a lot of subscribers, then you're probably making good money. Billing is where you can set up your payment methods to purchase things. And where payouts is, this is where you will actually get paid out. This is an important step if you do want to get paid out, of course, and you can connect your bank account or PayPal. If you want to make sure that the invoices that Lemon Squeezy sends out include your business name and your tax ID or VAT, VAT number, make sure to include it right here. Under team, what you can do is add your team members so that they have permission to edit your products or handle some of the things that are in your Lemon Squeezy account. And to add team members, simply click on plus and add their emails right here. Now that we've gone through the settings, let's go back to setup. And now we can activate our store. And in order to activate our store, what we actually need to do is to enter a few more details, including our business and home address. So this will be sent to the Lemon Squeezy team for them to manually activate your account. So there is a, quite a rigorous approval process, I'd say, with setting up a Lemon Squeezy account. It's not so much automated. It doesn't mean that you can set up a new account and then get going right away on day one. This, in my opinion, is Lemon Squeezy's way to find out and learn more about what you're trying to sell and whether it meets their terms and conditions. And it's a great thing because it's more about quality control and ensuring that their platform 
has that high standard and they're not just accepting anyone. So make sure you take some time to fill these details in and tell them what you're actually going to be selling, what your intentions are. So it's kind of your way of selling to them so that they can approve your store. But once you've submitted your store for activation, it'll take about a day, two days, sometimes three days to get approved. And if you don't hear back from them, just give them an email so that they can check in on your request. Personally, my store took about 48 hours to activate. While we're in the process of getting our store activated and approved, it's a good step to also get our email marketing and affiliate kind of program approved. So what we'll do is head to email and then you'll see this alert where it says enable email marketing. But side note, you don't necessarily have to use their email marketing tool. You could very well use ConvertKit and then have that all uh, connected up and integrated as you saw with its range of supported integrations and apps. So if you do want to use their built-in one, which kind of works seamlessly with, of course, the store and when customers purchase, let's say, they'll be in your database and where you can contact them about new product alerts and such. But go ahead and enable email marketing if you want to do so and the approval kind of steps are similar to when you have to activate your store. Same goes if you want an affiliate program in your store, simply go to affiliates, go to overview or one of the other options and then enable affiliates. Bear in mind any sales that are made through your affiliate program will attract a low 2% transaction fee. So that's something to keep in mind. But going back to the setup process, and by the way, if you ever wanna go back to the setup process, go to setup and then you'll land on this page where you can follow the additional steps. It does say create your first product. We could very well do that, but let me take you through the design uh, steps because this is also uh, an essential step to take to set up and design our store. This is what it looks like by default. And what we can do now is to show our store header. And this is a great addition to making your store a bit more custom and personalized. What it's suggesting is an image of 1600 by 300. So 16, three ratio uh, recommended with 10 megabytes max file size. So how you can create this is simply using Canva. Knowing the dimensions, all you need to do in your account is to go to create a design, click on custom size, and then we are going to put in 1600 by 300 and then click on create new design. And then you can design away using Canva with different backgrounds and you've got text. I'm not going to go through the steps on creating a header, but here's one I created earlier. I've simply created or use a green background with this text here of my store name. So my awesome store and I found an element right here or graphic that can be used like a logo. Once you're done with your header, simply click on share, download it as a PNG or JPEG file, depending on what it recommends. And then simply upload your header image. This is the header image I've located and then I'll click on open. What you can do now is click on publish changes so that you can preview it. So I'll click on the preview button and this is what it looks like. Feel free to make adjustments if you see fit and if you wanna move things up or decrease the size. Below the store header, what you can do is enable or disable different settings such as the store logo. If I don't want the store logo or avatar, then I can disable it and it's gone. The store name as well, which is right here, I can remove it, which I'll actually do because there's no point putting the store name again where when I have it right here. I can show the store description or give a description of what this store offers. I've just put in tools, templates and resources for creators so you can see what it looks like. Below that, you'll see show the subscribe form which connects with its email marketing platform or the tool. You don't have to have this, but if you do wanna collect emails and let's say, have customers be notified of any new product updates, then uh, they can sub simply subscribe using this. Thumbnail size, you won't be able to see this since we haven't set up any products yet, but you can simply select small, medium, large, or full size, and that'll show it based on the setting that you chose here. Product details as well, you won't see this in this preview because we don't have any products set up yet, but, but we'll get back to this screen once we've set up a product. And that's the design section and what you can do in terms of your storefront. Make sure you click on publish changes. Let's head back and add our first product. To create your first product in Lemon Squeezy, head to store, then to products and click on create product. You'll see the add product window right here. Under general settings, this is where you add your product name. 
For this example, I'm going to sell things like wallpapers and my online course, so all digital product based. So I've called it Modern Wallpaper Pack Volume 1. Next up, you've got your product description. This is something you definitely want to fill in and add some sales copy so that you can basically sell you know, your product. And there's a few basic things that you can do here. You can add a few basic formatting. I've quickly gone ahead and add some text here. So 10 modern wallpapers for your iPhone. So including these, these, and these. So you can do a kind of bulleted list if you want. Uh, if you can also highlight and then make things bold. Let's bold that heading. And if you want to do lists, you can simply type in a dash then a space and that will automatically format it as a unordered list. Or if you want a numbered list, simply highlight, then click on the numbered list, that'll turn it into that. You could also link some text, let's say phone, we can click on the hyperlink option and then enter a URL, that will link up to another web page. But let's leave all that as is. Down below, you'll see pricing, whether you wanna charge on a single payment, subscription, as a lead magnet, so giving it away for free. You can allow customers to pay what they want with the ability to add your minimum price and suggested price. But let's say you wanna charge a one-time fee, simply select single payment and then set your fee. Under tax category, select whether it's a digital good, services, ebook, software as a service. So most related to the very first one, which is digital goods. Next, you've got media. This is where you can drop some images and show your potential customers what your product is and what they'll get. The size of your images that are recommended is 1600 by 1200. So again, head to Canva, but this time instead of a 1600 by 300, we can do a 1600 by 1200 and create a new design based on that. But I've gone ahead and created that and added the images that are associated to whatever I am selling. And in this case, wallpapers, I just picked this up from unsplash.com just to demonstrate but we've got some other images that I'll set up as other products. I'm going to go ahead and drop one of the images. So this is the wallpaper pack and I'm just going to drop it and let it upload. But you can go ahead and upload up to 10 images if you wish. Next is files. This is important, of course, so that those who purchase your product will be able to download what it is that you're selling. So if I'm selling these wallpaper packs, I wanna make sure I zip it up in a zip file or something like that. I've just made up a zip file that I can now drop to this section. And this is what customers will get access to. Next, you've got variants. And this is where you can offer something like an upgraded or pro or premium version of your product where you can have different options such as different price, uh, different versions, formats, license types, uh, size and shapes, depending of course what you're selling. So let's say I'm selling these wallpapers. I can offer instead of 10, they will get an extra additional 10 wallpapers on top for a discounted price or something like that. But if you click on add variant, this will take you kind of to the very first step of creating a product where you set up a new product. And then once you're done with that, that will show up in the variants. But let's go back and under settings, we can generate license keys. If you're selling something like software, you can redirect customers after they purchase to a separate web page. Let's say you've got your own website and you want to host your own download page or URL. You can select that and specify the URL. Do you want to display the product on the storefront? If you do want to do that, enable it. And where it says receipt, you can customize the button text such as download content, download wallpapers, uh, access, purchase, or whatever it is that you want. And the button link as well. Where do you want it to go? And finally, adding a thank you note if you wish to do so. But if you're ready, click on publish product. Once it's added, you'll see it under products. You can preview. From here, what you can do is use the more options and then click on preview. And this is what site visitors will see. They'll see your images. And if you've added multiple images, they'll be able to scroll and swipe through it. And you'll see the heading and our description that we've added. And on the right is the checkout system where they can check out and pay. While we're on this page, you may have noticed this orange bar where it says test mode is currently enabled. So if you are just testing your site and making sure that everything works, you can enable this. But because we haven't got activated and approved, this is why you see the bar. And if we click on activate your store, that'll take us back to the activation. But rest assured, once it is activated, this bar should disappear. If you head back to your main store and give it a refresh, you'll see your product listed as one of the products here. 
If you want to directly link to the product that you've just set up, you can go to share and you're given a couple of options here. We can share the checkout link that you saw. So this will just take them to the page directly or you can go to checkout overlay and this will provide this kind of overlay on top of whatever it is your site. Okay, so this is the HTML code that you can copy and paste to your web page when someone clicks on that buy hyperlink. Additionally, there are a few options here where you can show the actual store logo. You can make it disappear or have it enabled. Uh, show the product media, which you probably don't want to do. Show product description as well. And the discount code uh, at the bottom of the checkout, which is usually displayed right here. You can also enable dark background depending on whether your site is white or black or just for aesthetic reasons. And same goes for the checkout link. You can customize it with these options too. But once you are ready to share it, simply use the link provided right here. In addition to your store products, you can check out all the orders that have gone through by going to orders and this will list all the sales and you can handle it that way. Subscriptions is where you can go if you have set up some sort of recurring subscription uh, product and customers is where you can go in and manage your customers individually. Discounts is where you can add all your coupons. If we create a discount, we can name our discount code and then enter the actual code that customers can use and the amount so we can base it on percentage or a fixed amount and whether this discount applies to specific products or all of them. So let's say you're doing like a Black Friday sale and you wanna enable it on the whole storefront. So let's say you're running a Black Friday sale and you want this coupon code to be enabled for your entire store. You simply leave this disabled and then that will apply to all products. And a number of other settings include start date, expiry date, and the limitation of redemptions. But that's where you can go to create those discount codes. Licenses is where you can manage all your license keys. So if you're selling obviously software, then you can set it up right here. But let me take you back to the design mode because what we can see now is the product that we just added. And the other setting is the thumbnail size, right? That I wanted to show you. So I've got small thumbnail size like so. We've also got medium, which takes us back to the default. We've got large and then we've got full. Quite big there, but let's switch it back to medium. We can also show the product details and that'll give us a little bit of a summary of what uh, is in this product. It is quite cluttered, so I'll disable it. I've gone ahead and added a couple more products so that you can see what it looks like and it looks cleaner this way rather than just having one product. But this is what it looks like. If we have three products and you know potentially we, uh, we could sell you know online courses, we could sell our Notion templates or dashboards, things like that. Now, although your site may appear and you're able to see it if you go to your custom you know url you aren't able to sell anything because your store hasn't been activated yet as you'll be reminded with this toolbar so make sure your store is obviously activated before you go ahead and tell the whole world about your store a few other things about lemon squeezy that i'd like to share with you include the home page which is essentially your dashboard where you can see your sales and revenue and your monthly recurring revenue or MRR. And what you can also view are your email subscribers right here. You can filter what you see based on the dates, whether you want a daily or weekly view as well as specific products. If you do at any time plan on creating a new store for whatever purpose, you could always go to the more options down the bottom where your account is and then click on add new store and that will take you to the same setup process which you then need approval for once again. And while we're on here, you can always go to the help documentation to learn more about Lemon Squeezy and how to set up specific areas of Lemon Squeezy. But hopefully I've shown you in this tutorial how to set up your own Lemon Squeezy storefront to start selling your digital products. If this video helped you, by all means, give this video a thumbs up. In the meantime, do take care and thanks so much for watching.